personnel. Let's go over to the Ministry of Information now. MTN and Telesel first reported to us that uh, they have internet connectivity issues. Uh, this was also confirmed by the four subsea cable providers. South Atlantic Telecommunications are three, uh, main one, Africa Coast to Europe, which we call ACE, West African Cable System, WAX. On Thursday, AT did not report of any internal, internet disruption, and we will explain why that was the case. Honorable Minister, just to put this in context, so what, is, what are these subsea cable landing services? And then again, as you look at the, the diagram, this is a diagram, uh, the gentleman calls Steve Song, put it together, he continue to update them as and when new cables do come in. And as you can see, um, I don't know if you can see from here, but within that many colors, uh, you see Satray, it's a thin line, it's a thin line. It actually goes from South Africa all the way to Europe. And you see me in one, I believe me one, it's a brown, brown color. Me one goes from Nigeria all the way to, to Europe. And then you see Ace, Ace, and then you see Wax. These are, three, these are four submarine cables uh, that provide connectivity to Ghana. So, so they are redundant. Why are they redundant? It's not, it's not just one. Whenever you have redundant service, you have more than one. And for distance purposes, which we will explain later, they are diverse, very far apart from each other. I need you to take a look at uh, this the one that goes from, it's called, if you look at the legend on the right, it's a Pan-African, and it talks about two Africa. It's, it's a green cable. Now, for this cable actually is the only cable that goes around all the African continents, the, 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 the two Africa cable. Uh, it's a green cable, and it goes, it is a single cable that goes uh, across all Africa. We'll come to the to two Africa cable. So for the purpose of uh, explaining what had happened, we put together a high-level traffic flow uh, of, an, of a typical internet ecosystem, a typical internet. So when, you, when we say internet ecosystem, uh, you begin with the, the box on the, the green box on the left, far left, we call them internet users. These internet users are you and I have uh, mobile devices, we may have fixed devices in the house, it could be a corporate environment, uh, it could be a small, uh, small size business that buys uh, 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 services to provide its sub services on the internet, but typically a mobile user. So what you do is uh, you have your phone and you have your applications, uh, you have your WhatsApp, whatever it is on your phone, and you are buying services from, in, in, for, for the purpose of this, discussion, let's just say you buy services from any one of the mobile network operators. So they take your traffic and they send it to the box, the second box to the right, and here it could be, uh, it could be a mobile network operator, it could be a terrestrial fiber operator, it could be a satellite provider, but these are folks that you are buying services. And they, they take your traffic and you, they make you believe that they're taking you to the internet directly. Uh, that's why many of us did not understand that, you know, we had signal on Thursday, but then our internet wasn't working. Well, the truth of the matter is, if you look at the box, the next box, which is the red box, the red box is the cable, submarine cable services. So typically, all traffic goes through them. It can go to them or it goes through them. For most of the part, it goes through them. The service provider might not send your traffic to them. It goes through them. But if they go down, then regardless of what you're doing, uh, you find out that your internet services is, is, is going to be affected. So they take your traffic, uh, and then they, they take the traffic through the submarine cable, as I showed you, 
going across Africa, the West Africa, in this case the West Coast, uh, all the way to uh, most likely in Portugal uh, or in, 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 in London or in any of the um, European countries where there are devices where we call them inter-exchange points, inter-exchange points. So these inter-exchange points are the ones that take the traffic from the cable or maybe from your MNO if they pass through them and, and, then, and then send your traffic to the rest of the internet community. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is the totality of these inter-exchange points across all the globe that makes the internet backbone. That's why we, you, know, you keep on hearing that the internet doesn't belong to, to one person. It is a combination of what inter-exchange points. Uh, now, I've also here, just for the purpose of uh, making sure you understand what is happening is, uh, on, on the top of the box that ha have the MNOs, uh, you have what we call the local cash services. Below it, you have uh, GIS. GIS is Ghana Internet Exchange. AIX is Accra Internet Exchange. Now, what do they do, actually? So these are exchange points, meaning that there is an environment here where all the MNOs and ISPs can actually go to what? Exchange traffic, all right? Which means that all local traffic will stay what? Local. All local traffic will stay local. Uh, and then as you see up there, there's also local cash services. Uh, if you know, many of us go to Facebook, we go to Twitter, and we go to the same location. So what internet service providers do, I, MNOs do is, they provide a cash server, a server that maintains the destinations that you are going to the internet so that if I have gone there already and the content and the data content is there, you don't have to travel all the way, right? They cache it locally. So if this is working correctly, then on Thursday, you should not have local services that's not available. We heard that some, some financial services uh, impact Of, of uh, ECG, top up of Ghana water. Well, if that's happening, it means that some part of that service is not local. Are, are you following me? Some part, of, if that's, if, that, if, if part, all the service is local, you go across the red box. There's no internet in place. Even if it's a satellite service, you still have to come down to terminate that traffic somewhere. So if the submarine goes down, possibly, Satellite services will also go down, depending on where the satellite gateways are. So this is just conceptually to understand that the submarine cable plays very key role uh, to the whole internet ecosystem. Now we haven't heard of them much because basically they all don't go out. They all don't have outage. Now it is said if any one of them had remained, any one of the four had remained on Thursday, we would have had some good uh, internet connectivity. As a matter of fact, if the big ones like the WAX and ACE and main one, if any one of them made, had gone down, we would not have seen any effect at all because they, they are size, they have big capacities in them. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, unfortunately, in, uh, in, on, on Thursday, uh, March 14th, uh, they all went down. Now, so that we understand how we got here, we have looked at the past 10 years. In fact, we could have done 20 years, but uh, Honorable Minister Desney, we will, we will have been here for a long time, so we just look at 10 years. So let's look at 2014 to 2024, right? Let's look at the faults, uh, submarine cable faults that have occurred and, and here we are even confined ourselves within the territorial waters of Ghana, right? And in, in, in any other, uh, in any other place. As you saw in the, the, the map, if, if, depending on where the cable cut is, or depending on where the fault is, a, a country may be affected.
road traffic was impacted. In December 2019, and again, this is, these are historical records. As, as an institution, we will make decisions based on data, empirical data, right? So let, please keep, keep, keep attention and, and let's see what has happened in the past 10 years. Uh, so in December 2019, South Ray, segment 14, Shantford, it took about, what, 39 days, 39 days. In December 2019, May 1, had a shunt fault. Uh, no traffic was impacted. Uh, let's keep on going. In January 2020, wax actually, in this case, it developed, the f there was a double fiber cut in London and Congo. That was actually a serious one for wax. Again, it's just one. And um, no traffic was impacted. December 20th, May 1, Shantford. February 2022, May 1, Shantford. June 2022, Saturday, Shantford. 44 days, 44 days. May, 20, May 2023, Ace, cable break. And just last December, uh, Ace, cable break. Now, based on what you have seen, there was not a single occasion where two cables actually were down, right? Where not, two, where not a single case. Okay, I go back so that we can see this in perspective. It is A's, so when A's uh, was down for four weeks, we have wax, we have mean one, we have what, saturate. And then if you look at the other one, when wax developed, uh, it was a shunt for it, may not have affected anything, and then you have A's, the bottom line here is I have shown you that in the past ten years, ten years there has not been a situation where two of the cables have actually been impacted uh, at the same time. It has not been. And then I, I also told you that all, all of the cables, at least three of them, main one, uh, wax, ace, they have enough capacity. Wax has the capacity to... to to carry all the traffic, right, at the same time. They have 1.5 terabytes but, uh, wax alone. So, Honorable Minister, does not need? So based on the past 10 years then, then any forward-looking institution who understand the issue, want to be proactive, can look at the issues and then and make decisions. And so that's what we came up with in, in February of 2020. We, we shared, we sent a communication to the MNOs, and, and I'll share that letter with you so that we are, we are clear. In that letter, we stated that uh, based on the series of uh, issues that had occurred in 2019, and you saw that in 2019 in particular, there were several breaks. Uh, based on that, uh, we need to understand their cable to MNO, the cable to MNO mapping uh, to avert future internet disruption. And again, I'm not choosing this word. These are the exact words in the letters that we sent to the MNOs in, in February 2020. In, so, they, so then they came, they came to, to make a presentation to us, and then we realized that um, most of them were either with one cable provider or two cable providers. That was nothing wrong with that. It was a business decision. Re remember that this cable are provisioned by a consortium uh, of, of investors. So if you are a con member of the consortium and you have traffic, you actually only pay the cost. So you, for, for business purposes, it makes sense that you put all your traffic on the cable that you are paying less. But then we realized that that was, that was a risk. It was a risk. So we wrote to them again in April, in April uh, 2020, we wrote to the MNOs to ensure that they connect to a minimum of three cables. These are decisions that were made in April 2020. I'm not saying these are decisions that made, were made after March 14th. I don't mean that doesn't it. It is my belief, it's my belief that the reason why Ghana did not 
Ghana did not experience a total inter internet cutoff. Was this, this single uh, directive from the National Communications Authority to the MNOs uh, from February 2020 and April 2020. I, I sincerely believe that. that that was the case. If we are not written to them, if we are not actually giving them the directive, it will have been a challenge on, on last, last Thursday. And again, I'm showing you the, le the letters. I don't know if you can see from here, but somewhere in the letters, in the letter, it, it states that, um, I'm reading the last one, uh, uh, following, sorry, <laughs> I forgot. So let me read from here, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> let me read from here. Yeah. So we're saying that following the rest, cable services, and I show you, I show you that in 2019, uh, the, you know, there were a few challenges. But now all of them, just one at a time. Uh, the National Communications Authority would like to engage the MNO, the, in this case, would like to engage MTN. We wrote to every one of them. I'm, I'm only reading one, one letter. MTN, the meeting appearance uh, for appreciation on the following. MTN, traffic distribution on, on cable providers. And, and listen to this. Redundancy plan for submarine cables to avert future disruption. We wrote. Come out with all these things because you know, you know, in the middle of the situation, we really wanted internet to come up. We didn't want, you know, it wasn't time to explain what happened. But I think this is the appropriate time to let Ghanaians know that. And see, has been forward-looking. Um, I dare you go to any um, any regulator in the sub-region to find out if they were if, if they were they actually took any such decisions. And, and we are very proud and appreciative that we're able to actually command. Now, look look at the second one. There too, uh, we indicate the second letter that uh, from a national emergency standpoint, from a national emergency standpoint, all MNOs. And, and self lines to establish and maintain physical cable connection to three to three. These are decisions that were made, uh, again, you know, based on what we had seen in the past 10 years. <laughs> not, not any, there wasn't a single occasion where all four cables went down. But we were forward looking enough to know that uh, for best practices is for them to do that. with the cable providers and uh, MNOs as well. In a meeting, uh, we, we, we asked them to come for us to review uh, cybersecurity, operational readiness, business continuity, and disaster recovery plans. They all came. So we are very clear in our mind exactly what COPE is. These letters. Please, if, if you really want to see them, it, they, will, they will be available. Honorable Minister, need, the next subsequent slide explains some of the work we have done. Uh, the result of the April NCA directive, I uh, all MNOs were directed to uh, three physical, have connection to three. Uh, it's very important that they, they did that. Um, now, as part of the above uh, arrangements, uh, AT decided that of terminating uh, cables. Uh, in, the th in the cables in Ghana, they decide to extend one leg to a cable company in, in uh, So that, that, that explains to you, and that explains to you why on, on Thursday, 14th, AT had conductivity to the rest of the world because they were using a cable that was not impacted. They rely on the directive that we gave them and added value to, to it.
So, Honorable Minister, does you know what happened uh, post 14th March? So, post March, we've had extensive engagement with the MNOs and the cable landing operators. When I say engagement, it's not uh, Zoom engagement. <laughs> and this is a face to face engagement to, to, to really understand the situation. Um, this, Face-to-face -face meetings were uh, attended by MNOs and the cable landing. In fact, I believe last week, Saturday, we even had a face-to-face -face engagement. Uh, we, and we continue to work with them. So what happened is there are about uh, three cable operators in, in, in the West Coast that were not affected. One in, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, there's one that exists in Lomi and Nigeria at the same time, one that is in, in Nigeria. And, and so these, because they have capacity, they're working with, with work with them uh, to, to ensure that uh, uh, our traffic to flow. Typically, these cables are provisioned with a, a lot of capacities in them, a lot of capacity. Uh, and so, as and when capacity has become available, uh, the MNOs and the cable providers to, to ensure that uh, there is good internet traffic in, in, in Ghana. And many of you have seen this. We have released about six, six press releases uh, to, to inform. Uh, the general public status at any point in time. We, we've done that. Um, we've done some media engagements as well. Uh, our, our Honorable Minister Ursula Ousu uh, Akufu, uh, he's been to the parliament, as I said uh, uh, earlier, to brief the full house. Uh, last Thursday, we also were invited by the Parliament Select Committee on Communication, and we, we, we've done that. And today, we are here to see the good. Uh, the good men, uh, men and women of the press, uh, to, to, for you to convey our message for, for us. One of the interventions that we had to do, Honorable Minister, kept on hearing that Cribers uh, Ghana refill uh, ECG Ghana Water uh, planning about financial. Uh, are working. Um, you know, we're adding every every thing. Just like that, uh, in, 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 in the utility services, ECG and Ghana Water, BOG was there. Uh, Association of Bankers was the Ghana Stock Exchange, where there several of these players were. Now, in, in having this discussion, we realized that one of the reasons why um, ECG, Ghana Water, and so on connect, uh, connectivity was, 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 was not working was because several of these applications were being hosted outside the country. All right, so it became a challenge uh, for, for, for them to now uh, contend with the limited traffic that was going to internet and coming back. Uh, we work with, we, we recommended to them and those to prioritize these uh, traffic, which they said they were going to look into it. The phone that they called to indicate that that was possible indeed, we could prioritize the financial services and the public utility services traffic uh, so that we can have uh, business continuity. Uh, and then we recommended to them uh, as much as possible uh, to host uh, some of these applications locally. There are very, uh, there's a national you know, data center uh, that is managed by NITA. Uh, it, it's a world-class data center. There are several other data centers around. I think we should look into bringing home some of these applications so that in the event of you know, uh, situations like this, they, they will be local. Um, the other recommendation we made is, you know, uh, most people don't know about the Ghana 
uh, Ghana Internet Exchange and Accra Internet Exchange. These are uh, entities that allow, as I explained earlier, entities that allow uh, MNOs and ISP. Oh, Ghanaian traffic remains local. Uh, the way internet works is internet is based on addresses, just, just like you and I have a home address. Uh, there are devices that are called routers. They keep destination addresses. Anywhere you want to go on the world, right, in the world, it has to have a destination. So your service provider has to look in this routing table and see where is the destination. Because in the past, the whole internet lives you know, outside in, in Europe, most times, even though I'm trying to go to a destination in Ghana, my service provider will send me to Europe, right, right and then bring me back. Because I'm emptying a customer. You are a border phone customer. And uh, to avoid that, to avoid that, if MTN and, and Telesel and AT and all these ISPs, they connect to Ghana Internet Exchange, then if I'm looking for um, any local traffic destination, I won't go outside. It is, it is a very crucial thing that I think as, as a country we need to. It, it came in very, very handy. Uh, we are recommending that all ISPs uh, or mobile network operators connect to the Ghana in Internet Exchange and Accra Internet Exchange uh, services. It will allow our traffic to be local. And, and, and then if you add that with local um, data centers, then we will have a truly local traffic. So, Honorable Minister Desnay, so question is, uh, what is the current status? What is the current status? Uh, AT, as we said, because of uh, them uh, having a leg into Nigeria using a different cable provider, that was not affected. You know, they always remain 100%. Uh, and then on March 19th, which I believe will be or Tuesday, uh, Telesel reported that they were 100% uh, capacity. They have 100% capacity. Uh, MTN recovered 100% uh, capacity for peak. You know, again, each MNO have peak, peak uh, traffic requirement. So if, uh, if you have, uh, if your peak is, let's just say for the purpose of the discussion, your peak is uh, 80 gig, right? And whenever you have 80, you know that you can service what? All your customers. And, and that's what MTN report. And this MTN has 80. I'm just using it as an example. Uh, so, so currently, as we speak, uh, 80, 100 uh, percent, Telesa, 100 percent, uh, MTN, 100 percent. So the question is, um, if, if they are 100 percent, does it mean the cables are up? No, I told you. you know, all the four cables are down. Uh, but currently, uh, the, the MNOs and the cable providers are leveraging uh, cable providers that are in the West Coast that were not impacted uh, by the outage. So that's what is happening. Again, so I, we explained that all the aforementioned traffic, 80, 100%, Telesa, 100%, MTN, 100% of the peak traffic. They are all riding on cables in, in the sub-region that were not impacted. Uh, why is it important? Many of you have complained that uh, if you say everything is up, why do we uh, have this intermittent uh, slowness of services? Well, think about it. If you want to go to London, you can buy a, 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 a ticket, BA. Buy BA, Accra London, six hours. But you can also decide to buy, to, to, to take Africa World to maybe Lagos, and then from there take um, Kenya Airways to South Africa, and then take, take BA again to London. You still get to London, but it will be slow. So that's what is happening. Because all our cables are down, they are having to leverage on cables that are not currently right. So you will have to, for example, you will have to, um, there's a cable that has been provisioned by one of the very hard working um, local Ghanaian companies uh, called C-squared, they managed to bring good, good traffic to the MNOs from, from Lomi, 
So it means that you have to find a way to bring that traffic to where? To Accra and then be able to now distribute it to their menus. Right. So if you are going to so if you are going to the internet rather than jumping to your cable provider directly, now you go to your MNO who now goes through the local terrestrial fiber to Lomi, right? And then you jump on a cable that might be going to South Africa before it goes to before it goes to um, uh, um, Europe or goes to Nigeria before it goes. So that might explain some latency, but it's not that much. Uh, it depends on the time also. During the peak hours, you might see that latency. We've also reported that our meeting, which will be uh, 16th, I believe it was, uh, uh, the cable providers indicated that it would take a minimum of two weeks for the, for, for, the, for the cable to be repaired. Uh, usually, it's not, this, these are not terrestrial cables. It's not, it's not a crack Kumasi cable that, you know, it, this is buried deep on the seabed. So it, it requires special technical skills. So there are ships that are designed purposely for, for, for this. These ships are not just sitting around. They are not like Uber vehicles that you hold them and then they are there. <laughs> they come from Europe. It takes time for it. Uh, in five weeks, I believe this puts it in maybe third week, third week of April. It could be sooner than that. It could be more than that. We are, we are actually not very sure. Uh, but we can report, again, the last bullet, we can report, we can report that the, cap the, the ships are already on their way to the problem, the problem areas. So what's the way forward? What is the way forward? Again, recall I told you, we made the, the February 2020 decision based on empirical data from 10 years, from the past, right, from the past. Uh, then it was one cable at a time, but then we thought that it was still a sufficient risk for them to distribute. So we decide that um, going forward, we are going to expand on that directive. We will expand on that directive. MNOs will be directed, as a first bullet, MNOs will be directed to connect to a cable provider in the sub-region that is not currently, that's currently not landing in Ghana. That's currently not landing in Ghana. Again, until this happened, there was no evidence that you could lose all four of them. But now, now we have data, at least. And so we are, we are asking that every one of them, uh, uh, in addition to having three here, uh, be sure to extend to a cable provider that is not in Ghana. Okay. Honorable Minister Designate, one of the very progressive things that had happened is the second one. Uh, last year, the board, of, the board of NCA approved, working with the Ministry of Communication and Digitalization, <laughs> uh, communication and digitalization, um, approved a cable. Uh, this two Africa cable is, is, is actually unique. It's unique in the sense where Africa cable is, is, is actually unique. It's unique in the sense that whereas all the existing cables go, let's say three of them actually go from South Africa to Europe, and then, and then being one goes from Nigeria to Europe, two Africa goes across the whole continent, across the whole continent. If, I, if we had a cable like that, we would not have a, a situation. Because de depending on wherever the cut is, you can redirect your traffic. Are, are you following me? Yeah. Um, let me go back and, and just show this quick. I'll, I'll come back again. It's, it's much easier to see from the map. Mm 
we are there. So the two Africa cable is, is the green cable that is going across the entire African continent, the green cable. Uh, as you have seen, uh, the rest of the cables that, that actually operate from here, they all, three of them actually go from uh, South Africa all right, to, 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 uh, to Europe. And so when the cable is cut in, in Cote d'Ivoire, then those of us that are in the south of where the cable is cut, we are impacted. Right? But if the cables were going across the entire Africa, then regardless of where the cut is, you can, you can be all, all right. Of, of it is two, the two Africa cable have a capacity of one uh, 180 terabytes per second, 180 terabytes, which is about 4.5 times the design capacity of the entire cables, uh, the present cables. And and as I showed to you on the map, uh, they also come with some. Uh, geographical diversity, meaning that they go in the opposite direction. Um, and additionally, additionally, an that doesn't it, from a distance standpoint, they are much further away, much further away than the four, four other cables. Again, I'm, I'm discussing the way forward, the way forward. So the way forward, NCA has augmented our existing satellite licensing portfolio to include recent broadband satellite services to provide alternative connectivity options for domestic and enterprise users. Uh, we, we've current, currently, NCA have uh, the, the, the VSAT, uh, the VSAT satellite service has been around for, for, for many years, several financial institutions uh, until I believe maybe 2020 or so, even the Electoral Commission exclusively relied on a VSAT to connect all the district offices. So this is a service that is still available. Uh, having said that, the VSAT itself, the, the bandwidth involved is, is much smaller because uh, these satellites are, uh, we call them uh, geosynchronous satellite. They, we are very way and, and they look at uh, for satellite broadband until recently when the hardware let a rubber engineer together uh, and framework. So we are the board framework. So entertain applications uh, from from uh, from satellite broadband. Uh, a few policy. Uh, issues that needs to be addressed, but I believe that that should be taken care of uh, soonest. We already have one of the satellite broadband uh, uh, providers called OneWeb. OneWeb. OneWeb is actually a competitor. If you go do a search, you see they are a competitor uh, with, with Starlink. But they, you know, their business model might be different. But they currently have um, a ground station here in, in Ghana. Uh, they have licenses to do that. Uh, we've received application from Starlink. Now again, I, I told you the, the framework was not available. Because the framework was not available, you could not process you know, application that doesn't exist. Now, now it is. So as soon as 
uh, between NCA and, and the policy uh, holder, we are able to sort a few things out. We, we should be ready to go on that. The next thing we want to do is we need to engage, we will engage the other regulators in the sub-region uh, to look into terrestrial fiber. Terrestrial fibers. Can we have a terrestrial fiber that runs from Nigeria all, all the way to, say, Morocco? Currently, there's no uh, terrestrial fiber that goes all the way. You do, uh, countries do have terrestrial fiber. Uh, but there is, a, I know there's a fiber from Cote d'Ivoire that goes to Senegal and maybe Gambia and Liberia. But we need to look into uh, such, such um, solution. I think it will come in handy. And again, we'll continue uh, proactively working with the industry to, to ensure that uh, this situation will not occur again. So that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Joe Anochi, for that insightful presentation.